The knockdown driver. It's one of my favorite shots to hit for students when I, at the end of the clinic, I always like to demonstrate shots and they ask me to hit draws and cuts and all these things. And what's interesting to most of the students is that my swing doesn't really look any different when I go to change any shot, whether it's a high draw or a low draw or a low cut or whatever. All I'm really altering is my left hand. And people can't understand that at first until they really get into RST and they realize your hands are really left there in reserve to manipulate ball flight if you choose to do so, and your body's really doing 90% of the heavy lifting. Your arms and hands should be so relaxed throughout the whole swing and through the hitting area that they don't really have to do anything. In fact, I can almost completely let go of the club, and that's kind of one of my visuals, is to really get my hands so soft through the hitting area, what it feels like is that the club just takes over and does its own thing. I don't want to be trying to steer and guide and control it. And so when I go to hit a big different shot like that, like I hit a ball and with a driver, 10 feet off the ground, my club head speed was still 110, but the ball only carried 204 versus some of the shots you saw earlier, which were carrying 284 yards. So this is our, you know, you're hitting off a big elevated tee and you want it to roll or you're just trying to get it through the wind. My angle of attack changed five degrees there, but if you compare it to my other swings, they look pretty much the same. So how did I go from a positive two and a half degree angle of attack, which is my normal driver angle of attack, to negative three? but the swings look the same. Well, it's simple. Everything, when you're looking at the physics that are involved in the swing and the pushing versus pulling motion that RST harps on, that left hand is there to guide and control the club face. So all I did to completely change the trajectory, the height, everything on that shot was this. That's it. I went from a positive two degree angle of attack to a negative three degree angle of attack just by slightly bowing my left wrist. That's all I had to do. And because my arms and hands are in reserve, they're not the stars of the show, they're allowed to start manipulating ball flight like that by making these tiny little finite changes to completely change my ball flight. In fact, I didn't even change the T position. The ball's still up in my stance where it normally is. But by me just slightly bowing this left wrist, all of a sudden the ball changes flights completely. So the key here, when you start working on your swing, you want to make sure that every time you get over a shot, your arms and hands are being allowed to be a passenger instead of the star of the show. If you get up over the ball and you're all tight and your wrists are tight and I look at your knuckles and they're draining of blood and they're all turning white, I know we got a problem. It's really critical if you want to become a great ball striker and a master of controlling ball flight, your arms and hands have got to be soft so that you can leave them in reserve so that you can manipulate ball flight as you choose to do so on every shot.